by this servant. Mm. When you look down at your credit report, look down at your police record, look down at your job history, look down at the relationship you've torn apart in your family, look around at folks who's supposed to have you back, but they were way back. You look around and look at friends who were really enemies all the time, and you look up and Nothing but great clouds there had seen to you. And, and everywhere you looked, there was trouble and it was it was turmoil and, and just finally said, I lost. Or we I might as well just give up and get me something to drink. I might as well just give up. I, I might as well just throw my towel in. Well, that, that that's the wrong, that's that's called projection. That's your feelings, that's your fear. But he's talking to a man who knows he who knows he is protected. And well. can I stop here and say something to you real quickly? Whenever you're surrounded, whenever you're going through stuff, that is indicative of God's way of finding out what's inside of you in the first place. I don't care what you've been through. You serve a God bigger than what you've been through. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. I don't care what, and don't let your mind tell you. And you know, God says something very interesting because God says uh, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 5, and I love this, and I actually use this therapeutically because when folk come to my office and they say, well, I'm going through this, and I'm going through that, and I can't do this because of this, and, and I can't do that because I'm surrounded. Stuff is all around me. Uh, I'm in a world of trouble. First thing goes for mind, you must not serve the God that I serve. Amen. And you can't serve it because you, you're talking like you already defeated. You sound like you threw the towel in. There's something wrong. And so Jeremiah asked the question. Jeremiah said, let me ask you something rather quickly. He said, if thou have run with the footmen, mm -hmm. and the footmen have got you tired. Yes. If you let bill collectors drive you to drink, if you let black folk drive you to smoke, I know they tough, amen. <laughs> I know they rough. He said, but, but it, 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 he said, that's just Satan's footmen. Uh -huh. If you let the small problems in life whoop you, if you let wanting a car, wanting a house, or the wanting, wanting a covenant spirit whoop you, you wait till something devastating happens to you. If you're having trouble with the little stuff, yes. what folks say about you is messing with you. If you're having trouble with the little stuff, how folk look at you mess with you. How feeling respected. If you can't run with the footman, how in the world are you going to run when the enemy steps his game up? Well, You just met the footman. You haven't seen the horseman. If you can't run with the footman, if you can't handle the little stuff, how can God trust you with the big stuff? Yeah. He, said, he said, not only that, he said, let me ask you another part of this question. He said, listen, if you in the land of peace, if you living in, in California, San Diego, and it's peaceful, there's no war going on here, you can get up every morning, go to your job, or go look for a job, or get you a sandwich, or maybe stop by somebody's tree, pick your orange, or go down the road, get you a sandwich, and come on back, and keep on doing what you say. If you having trouble, having peace in a city that's not in war, he said, what in the world are you going to do when we got to go to war in Jordan, which is the jungle? Yeah. I, I think it's a good question. What you think? I wish I had three people say amen. Yeah. See, 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 to, the place that they are in is not a place for wrong perception. Yeah. And I want to talk to you this morning from the subject that the Lord touches eyes. I want to talk to you about three P's. I want to talk to you first about perception, projection, and protection. Well, in the text, there is a perception. In your life, there is a perception. The way you see stuff. When you see, when you see stuff that makes you afraid, you find yourself cowardly under, you stop attending services, you stop, you judge everybody. I don't trust anybody. Sometimes I look at folk and say, you know, I don't trust nobody. You lying. Because if you get your hair cut, you trust in somebody. You lying. You lying. If you went to a gas station, you trust in somebody. If you got on the elevator, how many been on the elevator this week? Okay, you trust in somebody. Because nothing there but some cables and a box and a big old hole. And to get on that elevator, you have to trust that Willie, the maintenance man, did what he was supposed to do. So you can go up 15 flights. There is no parachute on the on the elevator, on the escalator. There is no cushion down at the bottom. You just step right on on it. You don't even know this man. And you get on it and you just go to ride. And they, and, and, and they even got enough sense to put some elevator music on for you. So just in case they follow you, have some soothing music on your way down. Amen. <laughs>
in my relationship Man. with God. Why not trust God? Amen. Regardless of what you see, Amen. by adjusting your perception of who God is, when I don't believe the Bible, that's a bad perception. Well. My perception is that somehow I can't trust the Bible because man has messed with the Bible. <laughs> well, man wrote up your own, your own manual in your car. And I ain't heard a person yet say they don't want a transportation because the owner manuals were written by me. Am I right about it? Oh, the blueprints from your house. Some man with a name engineer or con a contractor wrote out the blueprints, designed everything. I haven't heard anybody say, I'm not going in that house because some men have been messing with the blueprints of the house. They didn't just pop up, so I'm not going to move in. I'm just going to stay out in the field and live like Nebuchadnezzar, with long fingernails and raggedy feet. And some of y'all got to get your feet toenails cut. I've seen some of your feet, and you need to, you need to, you need to get you some seals or something to cut your feet. You're going to hurt somebody, you're going to cut yourself. Amen. All right, all right. Well, preacher, I, I see what you're saying. He, he looked out and saw no hope. He saw being surrounded. He saw the end. But the prophet got up and said, Lord, help him see the truth. And what I want to do right now is your man of God is to help you see the truth. Man. Yes, we're surrounded by 700 false doctrines. Uh -huh. There is only one truth. That is the truth that's written in the pages of inspiration. Am I right about man. it? Yes, there are many churches all claiming the same thing. But your job is to find truth. Am I right about it? Man. God has placed truth in his word, am I right about it? Right. And your job is to find truth. How can we know truth? John chapter 14, he said, I am the truth, the way, and what? And the life. And the life. Man. No man coming to the Father, but by me. But by me. Man. What is truth? Show us truth, and we will believe you. I remember he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse number 4, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Yes. Who the gods of this world have hid it from them. I can show you truth, but if you have a, a better perspective, a perception of the devil than you do for God and the power of the devil to mess with the Bible, then God to inspire the Bible is here. You already lost. Man. Show me truth. If the gospel is here, here to them that are lost, whom the gods of this world have hid it from them. Am I right about it? Oh, when we look at this, the truth is that they were always surrounded by something. Am I right about it? Uh, but also, you need to have another perception. We're also surrounded by God himself. Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1, See him therefore, we are compassed about by such a great cloud of witness. Let us lay, lay, lay by every way of sin that so easily beset us. What you mean a great cloud? As many devils all around you, you need to stop looking for the devil and look for the angels that God has placed around you. Y'all say amen. Y'all go to work. Y'all go to work sometime. Looking for people that's going to mess with you. If you look for them, you'll find them too. You know, I messed up and did that one day this week. I went to work. I didn't get my cereal. didn't get my bacon and eggs. And I went through the door and I was looking for that devil. And boy, it popped up. Boy, she popped, she popped up just as big and devilish as she wanted to. That devil was full of hate too. Because I had put in, the, in my universe that energy. Looking for negative stuff, my perception was that I need to be more concerned what the devil was going to do today than what God would do. Y'all not saying that. Man. See, 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 God doing something. I told you, they're surrounded by the enemy, uh -huh. but they're also surrounded by, by God. Yeah. What I'm doing in my perception is I'm trying to see what the enemy doing. Instead of trying to see what God doing. what God doing, when you get home, they stop trying to look what nobody what nobody did and find out what God wants to do. Right. You, 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 you'll find a whole different spirit when you go to work the next week. Don't go to work looking for what bad gonna happen. When you go to work, see what God's gonna do at the job. Oh yeah. And if you see, you shall find. Shall, oh, there you go. Man. Man, if you see, you shall find. Now watch this. Here's the other side. If you see, you shall find bad or good. Uh. Amen. Well. So when I went to work seeking something negative, I'm a fine. I found. Yes, sir. God tell the truth, woman. I was looking for that devil. That devil walked in. With them three bellies jingling around in front of her, bouncing around, and the first thing they did, walk by and didn't speak. Y'all know how black people are when you don't speak to them. <laughs> Amen. 
Let me as a preacher not speak to one of y'all. What's going to happen? <laughs> amen. I bet he won't get an amen this morning. <laughs> he didn't speak to me, and I'm not giving either. But you wasn't giving no way. <laughs> but I, I, you need to see him. He, he, he walked right by me, Charles, and didn't even speak. <sighs> Well, I didn't say nothing. I just kind of looked. All right. That's good. Good. I don't want to speak to you anyway. <laughs> but that's not on her. That's on who? You. That's on me. Who's the Christian? You. you. I'm the Christian. Who should not be acting like that? You. you. Me. She acting like she's supposed to act. She's a devil. That's what devils do. I had no business acting like a devil. Don't speak to me. Don't speak to you. <laughs> don't speak to me. Don't speak to you. How you doing? How you doing? Y'all tell the truth. So I can tell the truth. I'm not going to tell the truth. I tell the truth. I'm not tell the truth anyway. I went in and asked for a wrong perception about my day. Number one, God had woke me up. God had put me on my on solid ground with my right frame of mind. God had comforted me through a painful night of my arm. God had made sure I had traveled through the rain to get to work. God had been, I had a job to go to. My perception was messed up. I walked in not focusing on what God had already done for me. How blessed I am. I shouldn't have been stressed. And all I want to do is where is that devil at? And, and God said, well, I'll get right out of the way. Let's hear it up. And, and here it come in. And it wasn't long for that devil he's around in my clan, got disrespectful, sitting down and undermining my work. I had to sit there and take deep breaths and all that kind of stuff. And then it dawned on me, you know, I'm a child of the most high God. I asked for this and I said, God, I, I now folk changed my perception. And one of the things that went through my mind while I was in the midst of all that stuff is a really simple scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. He said, we are troubled on every side. Oh, yeah. Wow. We're all we troubled oh, on yeah. every side. Uh -huh. ah, but we're That's not distressed. Just because you're surrounded by stuff, don't stress yourself out about what the devil yes, is doing. Sir. Know that God has everything I'm in all. Am I right about man. it? He said, we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. Is this all right? This is in your Bible? Is this, is this in your Bible? Is your Bible? Yeah. I'm not making this up. He said, yet yeah, there are going to be days that you're going to be trouble on every side. But don't stress out about it. There will be days that you'll be in the perplexed. But don't despair. There'll be days you walk out your house and look like every demonic force around you is there to take you out. He said, don't be in despair. Why well, don't be in despair? He said, because we are persecuted. But we are not forsaken. Cast down. But we are not destroyed. Uh -huh. No matter what it looks like, it's not over. Because God hasn't said it's over. Man. For these reasons, I can raise my head up, smile, and enjoy myself. Because I knew I served a good God. And everything is going to be all right. Man. When we change our perception as his servant needed to, we change our perception and look at the church and not say, where is everybody? But we look at the church, we look at the church and we say, we got to make room for everybody. Yes, sir. Let me say that again. When we have the right perception, unlike Jehazi, we don't walk out of the house that God provided for us, look around at the enemy and say it's all over. When we have the right perception concerning the church, we don't walk into the church and say, where is everybody? Uh -huh. That is a demonic perception. Yes, sir. Why isn't everybody here? That's a demonic perception. Well, you're looking at me like I'm lying to you. I'm glad I didn't run out of scripture for yes, you. Yes, sir. Bible said in John 4 uh -huh. and verse number 35. What is that? He said, now don't you have a saying? In the Hebrew it translates, say ye not, which really means don't you have a saying? He said, don't you have a saying that in four months the harvest is going to come? Okay. No, he said, lift up your eyes. You know, to open your eyes and look at the opportunity. Don't you know if the church need to be prepared for a full church? Oh, yeah. Don't you know that that's just work that you need to do? Maybe the perception is that you look at the church and not ask yourself, what can I do for the church? But you look at the church and say, what can the church do for me? Maybe uh -huh. you change the way you looked at the church as John F. Kennedy said. Looked at the church and said, man, what an opportunity to build a church of Christ here in this area where there is no other church of Christ. Man. Oh, yeah, that's an opportunity. Uh -huh. Just spend your time wondering what to do. Well, where is so and so? Don't worry about where so and so is. She is where he is where they supposed to. Let me write about Man. it. The question is, where are you? Yes. That's the question. Where are you? And what are you doing? Listen to what the scripture says in John chapter 4 and verse 35. <laughs> Don't you have a sin? Or oh, they're not yet four months. Then come at the harvest. Now, watch this. Behold, I say unto you, just as I just said, lift up your eyes 
and look into the fields, for they're all ready to harvest. In other words, God is saying that when you want something from Him, when you expect something, it's already manifested itself. You just need to open your eyes yes. and see it is right Man. there in front of you. Well, I want a better health and strength. You ought to look at the Lord and say, all right. Are y'all still missing it? I want a better life for my family. God is saying, all right. Man. I want to be able to get sleep at night. God is saying, all, all right. right. Yes, sir. I want to be able to do better for my family and the church. God is saying, all, it's all right. right done. Am I right about it? I heard him saying in Matthew 6, 33, seek you first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you want better help, ask the Lord. And the Lord sure enough can do it. All you got to do is speak the things that are not as though they are. Yes, it's already sir. taken care of. Am I right about it? When you walk out your house and you're surrounded by the enemy, you ought to say, already. Won't you look at your neighbors right now and tell them you're going to start a new business and shout out, already. Won't you look at somebody and say, things are going to get better and shout. Already, won't you look at your name and say, uh, I'm the new black Bill Gates and shout already. Well, uh, we're already a 5,000 member church. Uh, just lift up your eyes, Lord. Touch your eyes that they might see already. Man, yes, sir. When we look at this great text, the second point, and I'll be quick about this. I know I've been preaching a long time now. Y'all been a good audience. Normally, I let you go home. You act right. <laughs> I want to be consistent. What a person feels inside, I make a couple points here. They begin to project. You can't tell me you're full of the Holy Spirit. You walk around like you've been, you've been defeated by the devil. Mm. You can't tell a man you're a happy married woman and your hair not combed, your head down, and you have a lotion on your feet. That's a sign something ain't right at the house. Amen. Because you're projecting what you feel. On the inside. And when you see a church ain't praising God, oh, you can't tell that church full of the Holy Spirit. Because right. so it is projecting what it feels on the inside. This new servant can't say he's a man of faith uh -huh. because what he feels he projects. is projecting itself out of his mouth. On the outside. Yes, I'm right about it. You, you can't sit right here, right now, and say, I'm a Christian and can't bear nobody in Christ because what's in you is projecting itself. You can't tell me you are really a Bible student and don't hold any Bible classes because what you're doing is watching Empire and fit the shades of gray and it's projecting itself out of your life. Whatever you feel on the inside projects itself on the outside. On the outside. And if you really got a relationship with God, it ought to Reflect project itself, itself on the outside. On the outside. Man. Listen to the Bible. The Bible says in Proverbs 23 and verse number 7, So that a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. James chapter 1, verse number 7. When you ask something from God, you need to be careful. Uh -huh. Because if you project a limited faith to a powerful God, he will not allow you to project faithlessness into heaven. He will not allow you to project doubt on him. God can do anything but fail. God knows who he is. God says, I'm God. I stretched before the land. Yes. I made the heaven and the seas. You can't pray to God worrying about something that, that, that's going to happen on tomorrow because he owns tomorrow. Uh -huh. So when you pray, James said, make sure you don't project. Get from me, James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Watch it, because he, this is a lesson about projection. You have to be confident in your prayer. Well, I've been praying for a long time, and nothing happened. And you see what you're projecting in your prayer. Are you praying just running your mouth, or what's inside you really believe God for it? If you really believe God for what's inside when you pray, you're not to project itself in your prayer. You should be talking about, Lord, if you can. What you mean, Lord, if you can? You must be talking about yourself. You must be talking about, Lord, if you don't mind, you need you need what you mean, Lord, if you don't mind. God can do anything according to His holy yes, and divine will. Preach. And the reason why some of y'all not getting better, because when you pray, you pray without faith. Preach, uh, preach, sir. You project the faithlessness in your life. But Brother Hamilton, I did I pray like that because I ain't living right. Ain't not ever living right. right. There ain't a man or a woman on the face of the earth. Prayer. More valid than yours. Man. And even the ones that's walking around talking about, well, you know, you got to be in, be in, be in, be, 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 be in line to pray. You got to have your life in line to pray. He is out of line. Why are you lying talking? When we pray, we, not, we do not pray because we got it together. We pray because God. Christ got it, made it right. Man. That's why.
why you pray. That's why the person get on his knees and pray. Because God makes it. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit interprets the prayer. Right. Amen. Y'all looking at me funny. Yes, sir. What you got? Let him ask in faith. Let him, hold on Let him ask word. In faith. Now, now, is that not a word of that? Literally, it's a commandment. God says, when you pray to me, I'm commanding you to ask me in faith. Faith in who? Faith in yourself. Faith in him. He can do it. Faith that is already done. Man. What happened when I don't do that? Let him ask in faith. What else? Nothing wavering. Don't nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like. For he that projecteth faithlessness. What else? Like the wave of the sea. It's like the wave of the sea. Driven with the wind. Driven with the wind and what else? Talks. That's why a man can pray to God and say, God, help me with this or that, and then get right up and try to go fix it right after you get through praying. That's why you can pray to God and get up and cuss you out mm. five minutes later. Hold on me, let me pray. Lord, I don't want to ask you. Just let me get along with Brother Evan. I don't want the trouble with the Lord. I want you to bring peace in our relationship. You just want to be one church, Lord, and one Savior. Negro, you step on my shoe again if you want to. <laughs> One more time, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to unleash the beast on you. Did you just get through prayer? <laughs> Y'all had never said a prayer and then got right up and tried to go fix it. Yeah. Me, me, me and Brother, Brother Derek, right? Yeah. Me and Derek, we got a problem. I pray to God. I turn over to God. But then I go over here trying to fix it with Derek. And God going to get out the way and say, I can't answer your prayer. Because you, you, you asked me in faith. Now you want, now you're trying to make it happen yourself. What you talk to me for? Yeah. I'm God. You don't ask me to get along with Derek and then go try to fix your get along. What you do is you pray to me and you leave, you, you leave it alone. I create the circumstances where you and Derek have to help each other. Y'all never had that before? Amen. You turn someone over to God in your relationship. You just leave it alone. You just pray. You turn over to God. And all of a sudden, God will bring both of y'all to her knees. And what, what she has, you need. And what you have, she needs. And it just will have y'all in the same place. And y'all go to work together before you do it. Baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too, baby. Oh, I'm so sorry. God, God answers your prayer. But what God says, I'm not. But if you're going to put your hand in it, when you pray to me, ask in faith. Nothing waver for he that waver. And like a wave, toss by, the, toss by the wind to and fro. He said, let that man what, brother, brother Evans? Let that man what? Well, let not that man think that he shall receive anything, that receive anything from, the Lord. from the Lord. Well, I ain't asked my prayer. It's not called a sin. It's called a faith, faithlessness. The reason you're not getting enough love, you don't have faith. If you ask God to help you stop doing something, give it to God even more. Don't, don't you try to concoct a way. Give it to God. And expect God. And then say already when you get through. Man. And watch God get busy. Yes. But if you go join AAA and AA.